What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. Today we're going to be doing another one of these underdog drafts. Uh, we had the Gauntlet, the Mitten, were drafts that started before the playoffs are going to go throughout the playoffs while well, they have it returning. So if you didn't make the cut in the first one, you can do these next ones now. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, the, the Gauntlet's about halfway done. The Mitten's definitely going to finish, you know, before that one does, but maybe they'll open up a second one. It's what, like Thursday right now? it's possible they open up a smaller one. Um, we went over last time the contest like structures, like how the mitten was different from the gauntlet, was different from the other one. This time, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, they're totally the same. You just gotta win every week. You're gonna be in a pool of six, we're gonna do a six person draft here in a second, have to win that. Then you're in a pool of 12, have to win that. And then in the gauntlet, it's 126, just because in the final round, there's just fewer total people, uh, but you just have to win every single round. So understand that. Um, also, I want to show you guys, um, we'll go over uh, the playoff schedule in a second, but I'm going to show you guys how to upload rankings directly to Underdog. So one, you could use this Google Sheet. Um, you can get it on our website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. Totally free. Just go to the betting tab, Underdog, and then click this link here. It's going to bring you to this sheet. You can draft directly off of this. You can start crossing people off as they go, putting them on when you're drafted. But what you can also do is upload these rankings directly to Underdog. And so if you're on your phone, if you just want to do it on the computer, that'll be the pre-draft rankings instead of what they have. It's kind of what I recommend doing. So to do that, we'll just do that now, then we'll go over um, who's playing this week. So to do that, rankings, obviously, that's where the rankings are. You need to do your correct slate. So I don't know how many guys play DraftKings. Every player doesn't have a unique ID Overall, like Aaron Rodgers doesn't have one ID. He has one ID per slate, okay? So you need to click the correct slate that you're playing. We're going to be playing in the three-round playoff contest here. That's going to give you the correct IDs for that setup. So what you want to do, click down here. I don't know if you guys can actually see this on the screen, but there's a button that says CSV upload slash download. Well, that's what we're doing. We're downloading and uploading. What you'll need to do is click download. Okay, that's gonna bring up, it's actually bringing it up on this other one. I'm actually on my bad computer right now, so it's gonna take a second to upload. But that's gonna download and I'll bring it over on the screen here. It's gonna download this. This is what you're gonna end up uploading. The thing is, we're not using any of these. So you can just take this and delete it, okay? Minimize that, well, minimize that screen. What you're then gonna do is come over here there's a tab on this sheet called Upload to Underdog. That's what you're going to use to upload to Underdog. Crazy, right? You're going to copy everything over to this blue here. Copy that. And then we're just going to go over and we are going to paste it. And you're going to want to do this paste. So you don't want to do the source formatting because it's going to be all weird. Um, you want to merge the destination format. Put that in there save it you can name it something so it's just like easier for you i'm just going to save it because i know it's the last thing that we did and then all you do is now you're uploading it so click upload it's going to be the first thing in your downloads right here right good now they're all here and you save it it's as simple as that so now when we go into the draft my rankings are what's going to show up on the screen they're not going to be super different but it's just easier than going back and forth. Also, you can't just draft directly off of rankings, of course. If in the first round we take um, Josh Allen, well, we're leaning much more heavily towards Bills players. But again, uh, we will go over that once we do the draft. So, who's playing this week? I should bring up, um, we'll open up another one here. Go to Fantasy Labs. That's just what I use um, when I just want to do a quick reference on um, just the lines. So most, this is right here. This is, oh, I didn't really want to do that. Um, that column there, live, is what the current line of the game is. So we've got Bengals at the Titans. That's going to be Saturday at 4.30. Titans, um, three and a half point favorites. The line has been moving. It opened at two and a half. It's moving towards the um, Titans. The Titans are becoming heavier favorites. Also, the total's going up, but... Um, I mean, it's a half a point. It doesn't really matter that much. So Titans, home favorites, that makes sense. They're the number one seed. They're probably getting Derrick Henry back. He was asked this week, you know, he like chuckled, like he's coming back, right? Will he see 100% of the snaps? I don't think anyone's going to know that going into the game. But I would say if you're Derrick Henry, you're the Titans, 
you're looking for a Super Bowl, right? You've made it this far. If he can hold up, he's going to get all the touches he can possibly handle. Um, and I don't think he's that worried about suffering like a setback because he's going to have so much time to recover into next season. He's going to push himself to limits this week. That's at least what I expect. So we've got that game. Uh, the night game on Saturday is going to be 49ers at the Packers. Six-point home favorites for the Packers. So they are um, the heaviest favorites of the week. Rams at the Bucks. Three-point home favorites for the Bucks. And then we've got Bills at Chiefs. Uh, Chiefs are now down to one and a half point home favorites. The line's been moving towards the Buffalo Bills, uh, and that's what I have picked right now. So, those are kind of the games, all of them close. Um, again, contests like this, you're going to need people in the championship, right? So, you have to win your six person draft this week, then you know that either the winner of this game is going to play the winner of this game. And so, if you can correctly guess, how the playoffs are going to flow through, and you're like, no, it's definitely going to be a Bills against Packers championship. Well, if you can build a team that has all of those players, you're setting yourself up really nicely because also it means, well, those teams won this week. They scored points. You probably have uh, good players in stack. The problem is, of course, everyone knows that the top seeds uh, obviously are the ones that um, are going to be like the highest draft picks, and so it's difficult to build like full-on stacks of the top seeds. But we will see. So we don't need any of these anymore. Um, we'll see how this goes. I've done... Um, yes. Um, I couldn't like read it there. I've done like two of these, I think. Maybe three. I don't, I don't really remember how many I've done. Because uh, I'm, I'm merging them into like the last one. They're hard. I think these are harder than the original one. Because in the original, you had so many more teams. If you started a stack, it's more likely you can finish that stack, right? In this... Like, if I want to stack Josh Allen and Diggs, I probably just can't. Oh, I have the first pick. So the one I do remember, I had the five and the six pick. So I've actually not drafted from this high. Uh, so in a minute, that's going to start. The, the difficulty in these drafts, again, is if I want to stack the Bills, I'm not going to be able to get Josh Allen and Diggs. So I have to get Josh Allen and someone else. There's a very large chance someone just goes after Singletary, so I don't get him. And so you're kind of stuck, right? And then you say, okay, well, is it easier to just start your stack? It's honestly not because if you start off with like Tyree Kill, there's a huge chance that someone's going to take Mahomes, take Kelsey. And now what do you do with the stack, right? So it's it's very difficult just because the stacks, excuse me, the stacks that you want, everyone wants and everyone wants pieces of, so they're not just going to like leave them for you if they didn't get the quarterback. Um, so you end up with a team that's kind of like mixed matched. Uh, so we're going to try our best to get these stacks here. Our best bet is, I believe, to take Devonta Adams, lock in a billion points in the first round, and then just pray that Aaron Rodgers is there at our next pick. I also think that, um, I think the Packers are set up really well to potentially win here. Um, a lot of people are going to be thinking that the 49ers match up well with the Packers. And while that is the case, the Packers are still a phenomenal team. They're a well-coached team. They are a team that is coming off of a lot of rest. They are getting healthy. They're a really, really good football team. I, and they're playing at home. It's a very difficult place to play. Um, I believe there was a stat that like Jimmy Garoppolo has not played in a game under 40 degrees. I don't remember. Um, he made a few starts, maybe like five starts with New England. I really don't remember which games those were. Um, but I'm just going to trust the stat I saw on Twitter. You know, it, it's something to think about. Going into Lambo, such a tough environment now you're gonna have like never played in the cold so we'll see we'll see what happens in that game but I, I really do think the Packers are gonna come out and win this game so um we see what I expected quarterbacks go early Josh Allen Mahomes okay then we see Cooper Cup Tyree Kill uh Derrick Henry someone grabs uh pairs him with Mike Evans so we're still good so far for Aaron Rodgers now if we could get Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones, that'd be epic. We're not going to because someone just took Aaron Rodgers, but unfortunate. But we can definitely get Aaron Jones here. That would be very, very nice. Um, one other thing, you only need one quarterback in this format. You're basically assuming that you're going to get the quarterback that is in the finals. It's much more beneficial, especially since we've already passed one round. It's much more beneficial to say, this is a player that I think can make the championship. Take that quarterback. No, we would... Remind me tomorrow. We don't want to restart right now. We're making a video. Ah, oh, Aaron Jones gets taken. 
But like I was saying, only take one quarterback. So we need to think about who we think is going to be in the finals. We can take Diggs here. This is a really you know, long time for Diggs to fall. Problem would be we can't take his quarterbacks. So we can't pair him with anyone. Um, but I think that... I think that he's fallen far enough where it's just sharp for us to take him. Uh, just because also we're not going to want to... We're not going to really want to grab Fournette because we're going to want... Um, the Packers in the Super Bowl if we have Adams. We can take A.J. Brown and potentially pair him later with Tannehill. That's an option. We don't really want to take Brady because, again, we want that other stack. I think that's our best bet. I think it's our best bet. We take A.J. Brown, which, oh, my wide receiver core, right? Even if I don't correctly guess the uh, championship teams here, Adams, Diggs, and A.J. Brown could all have 30 fantasy points. That's obviously like a stretch, but is it is it really? Like this, they're all set up wonderfully to have really, really nice games. So I'm feeling really good about my wide receiver core. Um, again, starting lineup for this is uh, a quarterback, a running back, two wide receivers, and a flex. So we've kind of already filled this out, but again, this is best ball. We're going to need to hit on a spiked person, like spiked week. We want to take multiple shots here. But again, our goal here is to pair a wide receiver with our quarterback. Well, we can't do Adams, can't do Diggs. So again, Tannehill is someone we're looking at late. He goes late enough. And since I have Brown, I'm more likely to be the person to take him. It's it's less likely some of these people will take him as their quarterback. Um, we need to be cognizant of the fact that like we do need him, right? We still have a little bit for our pick. Um, running backs available still. A.J. Dillon would be really, really nice for us to get. We didn't get Aaron Jones, but grabbing Dylan, that's still a running back that can score uh, a touchdown, could score multiple touchdowns, could still have a really, really nice game, especially in these cold weather games. He's a bowling ball, right? He's a fantastic running back. Of course, I mean, Aaron Jones is still better than him, but he could still be very, very good for us. So, of course, someone takes him, so we don't get him. Um, but what are we? <laughs> that always seems to happen, right? So what are we going to do? Jarek McKinnon is an option. Elijah Mitchell is an option just to get us, you know, to the next round. Of course, we don't want the 49ers winning because we have Adams. Adams will be someone who can, like, carry us throughout this uh, if we're kind of relying on Packers there. But he's an option to, like, get us points in round one. You still need to beat five other people in the draft, right? I don't love many of the running backs that we have left, so... Our first option is probably McKinnon because it just makes the most it makes more sense than um, Mitchell. Like just for for our build, it just makes more sense. Um, and just reading into things, it, it it seems like he could still be the guy this week. Now we could take both of them, or we could take Lazard with one of our picks. I'm gonna take um, McKinnon now just to to lock him up, and then we can think further. I think we wait. Um, we don't even have the stacking partner with Burrow, so not worth taking him. We don't really have a stacking partner with um, Stafford, so it would really just be do we take Mitchell or do we take Lazard? Because we have so many great wide receivers that could theoretically all still be available in the second round, I think the, the benefit here is to just take Mitchell to just say, okay, we have locked up two running backs that I do believe are going to be involved. I only need one running back to hit, right? I only have to start one of them. So I don't really need to like go out of my way here and grabbing other backs. I just need to figure out who is my team in this round of the playoffs, right? One thing I can do is coming up here, take Tannehill. I can also take Foreman or I could take, um, I could take Hillier with like the last pick or something. Basically thinking there is, um, you know, Derrick Henry maybe isn't as close as we think. Uh, they still use him in like a 50-50 split with Foreman. And when you're in a 50-50 split, it is entirely possible that Foreman... Oh, no. So there goes Tannehill. Maybe we should have locked him up with the last pick, but I don't think really... Does he take every single one of the picks that we wanted? No. It always switches after you do one pick, so you can never look at people's teams till the end. So that option goes out the door. So now we need to think about who is our quarterback going to be. Who can we stack here? We want someone from the AFC, right? Because 
maybe I'm just like too much into Adams. But who would we who would we even pick from? I mean, you could take Garoppolo, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do that. I mean, I have Garoppolo. I mean, it has, it has to be one of Burrow and Garoppolo, right? Like, they're the only two. I, I can't get stuck with no quarterback here. Um, Garoppolo would technically be stacked with Mitchell. Do we have anyone at receiver? I can I can take Julio and still just go with this stack and not have... Um, ooh. I can take Garoppolo and Ayuk and have Garoppolo, Ayuk, Mitchell... Oh no, I don't have any time to think about this. Let's just take let's just take Ayuk as a pick because I think that's I think that's still a, a smart pick there. Okay, so our option here is people have quarterbacks, right? Everyone else has at least one quarterback. Do I risk just like losing this draft entirely? I don't even know if Garoppolo is going to play is the problem. Oh my god. All right, this is the worst. Okay, I'm pretty sh- like I'm 95% sure Garoppolo is going to play. Maybe we'll check that afterwards what the practice reports are. The last report I read was that he was like limited in practice. And if he's like limited, like they'd be holding him out if he probably wasn't going to play. Um, I think Garoppolo is going to play. We don't have the greatest story. Right now, now technically, okay, our story is fine because theoretically, like, if Garoppolo, Mitchell, and Ayuk all like just go off, 49ers win, right? It probably means that Adams had an absolute monster performance, and that I am advancing to the next round because if if they get up, Adams is going to have like 15 receptions, right? And so if he just goes off, we know Ayuk went off in our build, Mitchell went off. I'm probably advancing, right? And now I advance with Garoppolo, Mitchell, and Ayuk. So. It makes a little bit of sense. I still want that bring back. I wanted to have Julio Jones and to have uh, AJ Brown. I can still grab Foreman. I don't know like how beneficial. Yeah, I was actually I was gonna see does um. We're not taking Trey Lance by the way. Um, I was gonna see if he if he'd fallen. Okay, so we need to make a pick. We should probably just take. Oh, we can take Juwan Jennings. I was going to suggest McKenzie because McKenzie clearly is just like a better version of Cole Beasley. Like he's very, very good. But yeah, we can just take Juwan Jennings here because he's still used on like third downs. They'll use him in the red zone. Could you see a situation where Juwan Jennings happens to have two receiving touchdowns? Yeah, likely no. But could it happen? Certainly. Um, is this our last pick or do we have? We have one more after this one. So yeah, I, I just think we grab... Foreman or Vaughn? Hmm. Let's grab Foreman just in that scenario I talked about before, just saying the 50-50 split. I think Vaughn makes sense there as well because we didn't really grab um, Tampa Bay players. And so you know Tampa Bay is going to score points. If Fournette isn't able to go this week, we would be taking him under the assumption that, oh, all of the touchdowns, or at least a good chunk of the touchdowns, came on the ground. Vaughn had two like one-yard rushing touchdowns. Brady didn't have a great game. Gronk didn't have a great game. Evans didn't have a great game because they didn't score that many points. Because it still could be a low-scoring game, and touchdowns came on the ground. That's kind of like the thinking there. And again, you need to like walk through that sort of thought process in these drafts because you have to beat five of the people. It's still difficult to win a draft of six people, right? You have to get first place. There's there's gonna be other people who have a good draft, who have players who go off, right? And so it's still difficult to advance in these things. So you got to tell some sort of story as to how your draft can win. Now, I don't I don't really want to grab a fourth running back. Now, it can still be our story if he's there at the next pick. I don't, I'd rather just like load up on receivers. The thing with that is, what are the odds that some of these wide receivers end up in my optimal, right? Because I have Adams, Diggs, Brown, Ayuk. I'm probably be gonna be having like two of those guys outscore any wide receiver that's on a list here. So of course Vaughn goes like the two picks before us. Um, who makes? I'm, I don't, the thing is you can you can say oh Nick go with 
go with Trey Lance, but you don't really want to play it safe in a draft like this, right? It, it, there's no reason to play it safe. So I just need to hope that Jimmy Garoppolo is the quarterback in this build. Um, but, I mean, you're looking at running back, like it's it's P. Ryan. Oh, I have 23 seconds. Okay. It's P. Ryan. Eh, no one, really, at wide receiver. I guess we can take the slower version here and go with Cole Beasley, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Ugh, I hate all of this. We'll just go with Cole. You know, same sort of thinking. Um, okay, I did four entries in the men. Um, is this our team? Yeah. We'll review the full draft. It's always a process getting this thing open. All right. Um, I don't really know what the correct decision with that one was. My thinking in just like, panic picking Cole Beasley was also the same thinking of Foreman. It's that like, I didn't really have Buffalo players. And so even if Buffalo doesn't advance, like could Buffalo score a few touchdowns? Well, yeah, they're probably going to score a bunch of touchdowns. Um, but if two of them go to Cole Beasley, that's nice. Oh, I have, I have Diggs. Okay. So that's not, that's, that's another reason we could have even taken him too, is that maybe they do advance, but I couldn't get Josh Allen because he went super early. And so maybe we see, um, okay, that, that makes a little bit of sense. Now I basically have the winner. So if we see Tennessee and Buffalo in the AFC Championship game, I have A.J. Brown and Foreman. I also have Cole Beasley and Stephon Diggs. I've got like two people on each side. Hopefully at least one of them makes it. And then even if like if one of them makes the championship, I've still got two players in the championship. Um I really thought we were going to lean towards a Packers build, but as I said to start off this video, it's difficult. It's really, really difficult getting these builds in there. I didn't even have an opportunity. Aaron Rodgers gets taken, Aaron Jones gets taken before I even have a selection. Maybe I should have reached on um, A.J. Brown, but I would have had to have taken him at 13, right? And for, for us to take, or A.J. Dillon, um, if for us to take A.J. Dillon over A.J. Brown at 13, I just don't think that makes a lot of sense. So I still think this was a good build. Um, I don't recognize, remember last time uh, I talked about um, Herzik and, was it Whistles Go Woo? I don't remember who the other pro was. We had a pro in the lobby, um, analyzed his draft. It was a really sharp strategy. Um, I don't recognize, at least maybe some of these guys are, I don't, I don't recognize any of these people um, from like DFS and stuff. So I don't think we need to analyze any of these teams. Um, but yeah, basically, um, we're loaded at receiver. Definitely our weak point is at running back, but we only need one. Again, you only need one running back in this build. And if McKinnon is going to get the workload he had last week, I know it's possible Clyde is back, but has Clyde ever looked as good as McKinnon looked last week? Clearly fits the offense, clearly looks fresh. Like for a full season, could you see that from McKinnon? Maybe not, but he's fresh right now. We're like in a league where no one is fresh. So he looked really good. Uh, grabbing him as a running back, Elijah Mitchell, even if they don't advance, um, he's probably going to have a decent game. And so we're trying to get to round two. And if we can get to round two, hey, we got that 49er stack, right? So didn't want to do the stack of the 49ers, wanted to have the Packers stack, but sometimes it doesn't work out, right? Um, but the goal when you're doing these drafts is to cycle through them. So if you want to do like 50 bucks in the drafts, I don't recommend you do two of, I'll exit out of this, I'll go back to like the lobby. I don't recommend you do two of the gauntlet. I know the prize pool is a lot bigger, but you want to like expose yourselves to more draft rooms because when you do that, you get lucky sometimes. There'll be some drafts where someone started off at one and no one took Aaron Rodgers or Aaron Jones. So they reach on other players. And so you can have an Adams, Rodgers, Aaron Jones stack. But until you expose yourself to enough drafts, you're not going to see that all the time. You're going to draft from different spots, get different builds, and you're going to do different teams, right? So you don't want to do two drafts of $25. If you have 50 bucks to do in this, you want to do 10 drafts of $5. And if you haven't even signed up yet, you saw on the our website, again, thefantasyfootballadvice.com, that page, we have the promo code, FFA. If you're a new user, you sign up, first time deposit, they're going to match your deposit. So if you want to put 50 bucks in, they're going to give you another 50 bucks. Now you have $100 in your account. You could do 20 of these drafts and stack the Titans in some. 
the Bengals in some. No one thinks they're going to win. Well, they could easily win. Sometimes you'll get that Packers stack. Sometimes you get a Bills stack. You can just work through a bunch, and eventually you're going to hit on one of them, and you cheer for that team throughout the playoffs. So that is how I would do it. I always recommend doing a lot of smaller dollar buy-ins and not like one huge buy-in or like two larger buy-ins. But that is just my advice. You do what you want. So that'll do it for this one. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, how about hitting the like button? How about subscribing to the channel if you're new here? Thanks for watching.